Hey everyone, it's Gary House, cooking everything outdoors. Today, on our smoke vault, we're going to knock out some country ribs. Thick, meaty, succulent, already off the bone, <laughs> country ribs. And I think some macaroni and cheese, maybe some coleslaw too. Coming right up. Cooking Everything Outdoors show. I hope you try this at home. Ribs, full racks, baby backs, St. Louis cut, country style ribs, no bone, big fat slabs of meat. This is what we're smoking up today on our Camp Chef 18 inch smoke vault. And all I'm going to do is put a little bit of rub and this is from my friends over at Black Ops. This is their new Black Ops seasoning. And we're going to coat our ribs. I'm going to smoke them until they're 160, 165 uh, internal temperature. I'm also going to be adding some bacon, macaroni, and cheese into the Camp Chef smoker. And I think as another side, I'm going to knock out a little bit of red cabbage and cucumber coleslaw. We'll see. First things first, let's get this rub on. I mean, this is brand new to me. They were nice enough to send me a sample, and I thought, what the heck? Let's, uh, let's see how it goes on um, some country ribs. A lot of times you've seen me do ribs, and I'll put a, uh, a mustard... Um, binder on there and that's just to, to really just to help the rub on but I'm not going to do that this time I'm just going to knock out this beautiful uh, seasoning and according to them it says seasoning is a unique blend of spices that will add depth of flavor when blackening meat poultry seafood meats use it to add flavor to soup stew salads and sandwiches and more so it's a really it's a multi-purpose um, seasoning so we'll see how it goes didn't say pork but heck, I bet it works just great on pork. And let's get a healthy, healthy, healthy coating on here. Yeah, you know, if you don't go out and experiment and try different things, be innovative, have some fun with it, you really you're not cooking. So I'm gonna get this on there. I'm gonna dump some more in the bag. Basically, I'm gonna let this. Uh, rub sit on here for a few hours so that it blends in with the meat and oh that rub guys black ops this smells fantastic I think you guys have a winner here so let's get these in there I'm going to add a bunch more in there. We'll get this coated really well. <clears throat> a bit more. Then I'm going to dump it back. Uh, I'm going to put it back in the refrigerator. Because you don't want your pork to come to room temperature. Not like I would do with a, a steak, for instance. Then, <clears throat> We're going to keep this chilled. Best to be safe. So that's it. That's the, the start of this recipe. This is all we're going to do. Again, this is uh, Black Ops seasoning. 18 inch Camp Chef smoke ball, which you see cranking away right there. And uh, some more goodies to come. By the smell, I'm thinking I got a winner here. Guys, you better send me a couple cases of this stuff. Okay, our ribs, <coughs> country ribs have been uh, in the refrigerator for a little while with the Black Ops seasoning all over them. Now I need to get them in the smoker. The country ribs, they're pretty, pretty healthy here. And it's pr 
probably be, probably gonna take four to six hours to cook these. Which means that this time of year, I'm gonna be pulling them out in the dark. But um, you know what, we'll do it anyway. Gotta get these on, it's my dinner. Uh, and if I have to put lights up to show you guys, that's what we'll do. So, this is going to go on the uh, bottom rack of my smoker. Which I have going here. Water tray on the bottom. Chips going. I'm going to have to add more uh, chips to it. But let's get this bad boy in there. Okay, looks good. Need to get some more chips on there. Still smoking a little bit there, but we'll we'll add a few more. And what I'll do is I'll I'll get some more soak in here, and we'll add it to the um, to the smoker. Keep things going. Going to want to have this bad boy riding at about 225. So as the temperature drops out here, I'll turn up the heat a little bit. Got it sitting on uh, medium right now. Again, four, six hours. It'll be dark, but we'll be eating. Next, I'm going to get our macaroni and cheese ready. The new recipe of mine. See how it goes. Let's work on the macaroni and cheese dish. This is a, a smoked bacon, macaroni, and four cheese dish. Kind of something off the top of my head I've been thinking about for a while. So you get to see it. As always, my first attempt doing this. The only way I would have it. Uh, sink or swim. You know how that goes. So I've got a lot of ingredients in this and uh, uh, I think it's going to add some, some really great flavor to this. It's, it's not your craft macaroni and cheese by any stretch of the imagination. So, I have 16 ounces of large elbow macaroni. I have six slices of smoked bacon. A cup of whole milk. Pint of heavy cream. I have a three cheese blend. This is shredded and it is... Um, What's in here is Parmesan, um, Asiago, and Romano. I have a package of Mexican style mild cheddar and jack cheese. That's two cups. Then I have two cups of sharp cheddar cheese. I have a package of cream cheese. Stick of butter, we're gonna use about half of it. Salt and pepper. And then I am going to put a corn flake, breadcrumb, Topping. What do you think? I think we need to get moving on this. <clears throat> so, how are we going to do this? Very carefully. So I'm going to mix up basically the dry ingredients and then pour the wet ingredients in it. And my thought here on this recipe is that I would have just a dump it and cook it macaroni and cheese. I suspect that at the cooking temperature that I'm going to be cooking, 225 degrees, that it will take about an hour to get this done where I want it. And this, um, you know, I just love eating this macaroni by itself. In fact, when I, I cooked this earlier, I just put a little butter, some salt and pepper, and some cheese on it and to die for. So, um, let's get our um, cheeses mixed into this and our bacon. And then on top of that, I'm going to pour all of the um, wet ingredients on there. Uh, 
I, I have seen so many different versions of mac and cheese. Almost gives you a headache trying to figure out what's the right one, what's the wrong one. You know, my uh, I grew up on the yellow craft stuff, and this is kind of a new sensation for me and the family. And I, I really like uh, homemade macaroni and cheese. And I am not going to have enough room, so. All the cheeses are in there, and what I need to do is get in here and get a little physical. Oh, wait, first the bacon. Let's not forget that. This is smoked bacon, thick slabbed, so I want to get uh, pieces, really, cut up. I know you can't see that very well. So we'll just, and I don't want them to be real small pieces because I don't want them to turn out to be lost in here. I really want to be able to taste the bacon flavor. So this is six slices. Okay, so got the bacon in there. Now I need to add the cream cheese because this is going to be a cheesy. Cheesy, not as in cheesy, but it's a cheesy recipe. And so I'd add some richness to it. And I just want to cube it up. Because as it cooks, it's going to melt all through there. This is really going to be. I think enough for two batches and <clears throat> around here that's a good thing so you could in theory cut this in half but let's uh, let's start um, <laughs> let's start mixing this up so these are pretty good chunks And probably going to have to get my hands in this and get it messy. Nothing wrong with that. But as we work through this and getting it all blended together, we're going to have quite a, quite a little concoction going here. Oh man, you know what? I think I could probably eat this just like this by myself. So let me get this mixed up. And I'll be right back. Okay, we're mixed up. And believe me, I've made an enormous mess. Much to the joy and happiness of Bailey. So now I, what I want to do is I want to mix my wet ingredients up here. Which is really it's just milk. One cup pint of heavy cream, that refuses to open, there we go, salt, I'm going to tell you about um, tablespoon. It's up to you. The recipe gurus get upset when you don't have exact measurements. Okay, so what is that? That's about a teaspoon. About two teaspoons. Pretty exact. Okay, take a nice clean spatula. Mix it up slightly. Take it into our regular bowl here of mac. And monstrously delightful wonderfully full of cheese. Get this all soaked in there. Mm. 
Okay. Oh boy, I'm getting hungry already. <clears throat> I still have butter I want to add to this. And the butter is going to actually go on top of my crust so that it'll kind of melt through it. Ugh. I don't know, can you eat it like this? I want to. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'm loving this. So, we've got a um, foil pan here. I don't know how many quarts it is. Does it matter? Fill her up. So let's get this in there as much as we can. Yeah, good. Two batches. Maybe not. Uh, pretty hefty um, bowl here. I'm not going to get it all in there. I'm get most of it in there. That's what I want to see. Right like that. Okay, so that is rock solid full. Some goodies in there. <laughs> Bailey having a great time. So that's what we're looking at right now. And I'm gonna put the crust on next with uh, some butter. So let's finish up our, our topping. First thing I wanna do is take a stick of butter and get me some slices. Pats, if you will. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use the whole stick of butter or not. In fact, I probably, I don't think I will. That might change as the recipe evolves over time. Perhaps several of you will be brave enough to try this, I hope. And you will get back to me and say, Oh man, this is great, but you should have done this. So this is our um, cornflake breadcrumb topping. It's two cups. I just want to work it around there. Get it completely covered. And you know, it might take one and a half cups for your dish. You might take one and three quarter cups. And I'm at one and five eighths cups. Let's get some butter on the top of this. Probably going to send some health cautious people, like me, into a frenzy after I watch this. But that is my macaroni and cheese. So in the last shreds of sunlight that I have, I'm going to put together my cucumber coleslaw. Super simple. There's something uh, whooped up here and some red cabbage that's got a outer peel here I'm gonna take off and got this nice and washed up. So what I you just want some thin slices. This is this is not a, a mega meal here. And I love red cabbage. I can eat uh, this by itself. In fact, quite often I'll slice up a big wedge of this for lunch and sprinkle just a little bit of salt on it. And I, I tell you, I'm quite happy. It's, it's got a, just a great flavor to it. So that looks probably enough. And we'll give it some more. 
slices this away. Get that big, couple big chunks out of there. Get this in our bowl. It certainly is a pretty looking vegetable. And I really want to do the same thing with my cucumber. So, a little bias cut there. And maybe quarter inch slices to complement the cabbage. You know I can't stand anything in small pieces. It's all going to be chunky. And we're making our coleslaw sauce from scratch. And I'm thinking that's just about enough. So let's get some of these and we'll put some slices on there. And this is not uh, a traditional recipe. This is not something that I've had before. It's just something I wanted to make. The uh, coleslaw sauce itself is not my creation. It is from cooks.com. I picked up online. That um, actually was going to just get a you know, ready-made coleslaw sauce. Super simple, easy. It was $3.99 a bottle. Yeah, it ain't gonna happen. So, having said that, let's uh, make it. So, half a cup of mayonnaise. Give or take. Tablespoon of milk. Tablespoon of vinegar. Now, I don't know, the recipe called for vinegar. Didn't say white vinegar, didn't say apple vinegar, didn't say pink vinegar or blue vinegar. Uh, I'm using apple cider vinegar. We'll see. One to two tablespoons of sugar. One and a half here. Whisk it up with your spoon. Solid advice there. Salt and pepper to taste. Here we go again. Whose taste? My taste. You can leave it out. A couple good pinches. Back to our spoon wisp. No, whisk. Wow. Spot on. Okay, let's get this covered. You can go light, you can go heavy. I'm giving it the gusto. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm talking about. What do you think, Bailey? You like coleslaw? Yeah. You like anything you can eat, don't you? All right. Red cabbage, cucumber, coleslaw, homemade slaw sauce. I'm gonna get that in the fridge. Get those flavors blended together a little bit. I'll be pulling out the mac here uh, in no time. And then I'll pull out the ribs a little bit later. Um, but what I want to do is give you a quick peek of what's going on in there. Because by the time it gets done, it's going to be dark. So, let's check it out. Okay, let's um, take a look. Our, our Actually, our temperature's creeped up a little bit. i got to adjust it back down a bit. Uh, because we're hitting about 250, 
55 right now and I don't want it that high. I'm just making some adjustments here as the temperature drops. Let's take a quick peek at what we have going on in here. Oh wow, so here's our ribs and uh, whatever you use to take a temperature with you want to get your ribs up to 160, 165 here. I'm using a thermopin. If you do not have a thermopin you need to seriously think about getting one because these things rock. Instant on, instant temperature. So I'm at 155, 157. 152. So I'm real close. I probably have another hour um, to go, but instant reading. I'm not losing a lot of heat. Look at that Mac. That is just all melding. It's got nice brown coating on there. Um, it's heating up really, really nice. I'm getting seriously hungry. I'm going to add a little bit more water to the pan, a few more chips down there, cook it for another hour, turn on the lights, pull it out, and show you guys what's going on. Okay, it's time to pull the mac and cheese off. Bacon. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it smoked bacon mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. That it's a scrumptious little dish perking away there. Yum yum. Okay, let's double check the uh, ribs real quick. Thermopin. Okay, we're getting close. We're at. 152 to 156 range. Coming along nice. We're going to be eating soon. So our smoked country ribs are at uh, 162, 63. I just checked them. Need to get started getting some sauce on them for the last few minutes of uh, smoking. What I'm using is <clears throat> some Allegro barbecue sauce. My second bottle, stuff is really good. Give it a shot. Let's lather on some sauce. Oh yeah. Truthfully, I wish I would have put the sauce on about 20 minutes ago, but kind of got distracted. So we're putting it on now. It is what it is. And I still have some light, you can uh, see. So I'm going to let those do uh, maybe in about 5 uh, to 10 minutes. I'm going to put a little more sauce on. Then I'm pulling them. I would have liked to have gotten a, a good 30, 35 minutes of uh, sauce time, but... It's not going to happen. This belly is incredibly empty. And those ribs have got to come off. i got to eat them. Got my mac. Got my slaw. Got Bailey licking up the drippings. All right. 15 minutes. We're going to serve it up. Well, we did it. I have put together country, or uh, smoked country style pork ribs. We made smoked bacon mac and cheese. Made red cabbage cucumber slaw. Did it before it got dark, even though I've got lights on right now so you can uh, see me a little bit better. Uh, the ribs are done. Got a couple coatings of sauce on there. And uh, let's pull them off. Then I'll plate it up and let's take a look at all this. So, 
I, you know what, I'm totally happy with that. Let's take a look at this Mac. My first ever smoked mac and cheese. And... <laughs> okay. I'm a happy camper. Look at that cheese. And beautiful cucumber, red cabbage, slaw. To top it off. <clears throat> Well, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I'm going to eat good, and I'm a happy camper. So, a couple things real quick. iTunes. Get on iTunes. Leave me a positive review. A comment. Something. Get this show up on the charts. Stop by to visit my sponsors. Camp Chef, right? Island Grillstone. You've seen some great things that I've done with that. Uh, I have some more sponsors uh, bringing online here pretty soon, so it's going to get even bigger and better and more exciting. This is Gary House, Cooking Everything Outdoor Show. I'm going to go eat.